Hello, we're standing here in front of the monument that commemorates the Battle of Barnet, one of the most important battles of English history. And it was part of the Wars of the Roses. Now, the Wars of the Roses weren't so called because the soldiers used flowers or roses as weaponry to bash each other over their heads with. They were called the Wars of the Roses because of the red rose of the House of Lancaster, which I'll put on my left hand, L for left, L for Lancaster, and the white rose of the House of York. And the Wars of the Roses and the Battle of Barnet, which we're interested in here, were fought because there were simply two kings on the throne of England at the same time. And to have two kings of England on the throne of England in, in medieval England was just unthinkable to allow to continue. It would be like having two gods. You could only have one god, you could only have one king of England. And there were two kings. There was on my left hand, the Lancastrian hand, Henry VI of Lancaster. And on my right Yorkist hand, there was Edward IV of York. And both these kings had unimpeachable claims to the throne. They were both royal, both legally, legitimately descended from their um, joint ancestor, Edward III, King of England, in the previous century, the 14th century. So that's why the Wars of the Roses took place. That's why the Battle of Barnet took place. Now, as the monument over here states, it took place on April the 14th, Sunday, Easter Sunday, April the 14th, 1471. A blasphemous date to fight a battle, but of course the soldiers on both sides thought that they were doing God's holy work and that God would smile down on their labours. Now, it's important to bear in mind that the reason the battle was fought, as I've said, was to decide who would be the one and only King of England. So at dawn on Easter Sunday, April the 14th, 1471, the soldiers, the armies and London and England at large knew that within a few short hours it would be known, it would be resolved who would be the one king and who would be the defeated, possibly slain king. Now Henry VI of Lancaster didn't take part in the battle because he was suffering from insanity. Edward IV, the Yorkist king, uh, a young, striking, virile man who had never lost a battle prior to Barnet, was 29 and literally led his troops into battle, getting involved in the thick of it. Now, it's disputed where the battle took place. This is very controversial. The conventional view is that it took place south of this monument, just north of High Barnet and that this monument marks more or less the north edge of the battlefield. The new viewpoint is that it took place further north, round about Rutan Park, Kitts End, this is Kitts End Road over here, so north of where we're standing, north of the monument, and that's not been resolved. But be that as it may, the battle only lasted about four or five hours. It was fought in a thick, impenetrable fog. Now, the two main commanders on the day were York is King Edward IV, and for the Lancastrians, as I said, Henry VI could not take part in the battle due to his medical state. The main commander for the Lancastrians was Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick, otherwise known as Warwick the Kingmaker. Why was he known as the Kingmaker? Because very complicated, so bear with me. Warwick the Kingmaker had started off as the main supporter of Edward IV, and he had helped Edward IV become the rival King of England to Henry VI in 1461 at the Battle of Towton, another of the famous battles of the Wars of the Roses. But then, for very complex reasons, Warwick, the, uh, sorry, I should have said, we now know why he's called Warwick the Kingmaker, because he had literally made Edward IV into the king. But then, a few years later, Warwick the Kingmaker fell out with Edward IV of York and had wandered over. He had defected from York 
to Lancaster. This had happened about two or three years before the Battle of Barnet. So we find Warwick at the time of the Battle of Barnet trying to hoist Henry VI up. It's like a seesaw. And Warwick, the kingmaker, now wants to betray his former friend, Edward IV, and bring Henry VI up as the sole king. Now, the whole battle was fought in a thick, impenetrable fog. One of the chronicles at the time states, I'm not quoting exactly, a man might not see profitably before his own hand. And in that fog, a mistake was made, rather complex to go into, but suffice it to say that there was what would be called today a friendly fire incident. And the Lancastrian soldiers fired upon each other and that turned the tide of the battle and it meant that uh, Warwick the Kingmaker and his brother Montague, Marquis Montague, were slain in the latter stages of the battle and that turned the tide of the battle and it led to, instead of a Lancastrian victory, which it looked as though it was going to be, it turned into a Yorkist victory. The monument here commemorates the battle. It's sometimes said that this is where Warwick fell. Warwick didn't fall here. Whether you go with the conventional view or the new view, he certainly fell and died uh, quite a bit north of here. Uh, and in fact, the monument does not state that he fell here. It says, again, I'm not quoting exactly, here was fought the famous battle between Edward IV and the Earl of Warwick, in which the Earl was defeated and slain. So, not killed here, but it marks the site of the battle. Uh, the monument was only put up in the 18th century, in the 1740s, by a local landowner by the name of Sir Jeremy Sambrook, who lived in uh, North Mims. And um, it's, it's an important monument, and the battle is supremely important also because it enabled Edward IV of York, on my right hand, to go on to reign more or less unopposed for 12 more years. He died in his bed in 1483, was succeeded by his youngest brother, Richard, Richard of Gloucester, Richard of York, who then became Richard III, the one whose body was dug up recently in a Leicester car park. Richard III was made to fight the Battle of Bosworth, the, more or less the final battle of the Wars of the Roses. He lost the battle, he lost his life, and he lost the dynasty. Uh, Richard the Third, the, third, the last of the Yorkist kings, was succeeded by a very obscure Lancastrian earl, because the Lancastrians won the Battle of Bosworth, ultimately won the Wars of the Roses, and the Tudor dynasty then followed. Uh, an obscure, uh, obscure earl by the name of Henry became the next king, the first of the Tudor dynasty, but the Tudor dynasty in all but name was Lancastrian. So that is more or less the story of uh, the Battle of Barnet in a very small nutshell. It's immensely complicated and I've only given you uh, the tip of the iceberg here.